Hi, and welcome back. Today we're gonna do a yang and yin class, which is one of my favorite kind of classes, because we build up some heat by flowing, and then we go right into some nice relaxation poses. We're gonna start off this practice on the back to relax, so I, I guess technically it's gonna be a yin and yang and yin class, if we really are honest about it. So let's start off with some yin, lie down onto your back. So first, just start with your feet wide apart and let your thigh bones internally rotate. Let the knees knock in. Open up your arms like a cactus and just notice how much your rib cage has to tip up in order for the chest to open and the hands to fall to the ground. Oh geez, that's kind of a lot. Got a whole rib flare situation going. So we're gonna, on the exhalation, drop the ribs in and down, let the pelvic roots reach towards the heels, and then let the chest spread and open like that. Now let's turn this into a little bit of a vinyasa, a movement. So first, just the movement of the breath, observe the expansion. And notice on the exhalation, drawing back in and down, grounding. Then internally rotate your left arm, internally rotate your left leg, and then change sides. Internally rotate right arm and right leg as the left arm externally rotates. Now keep your arms like that, but then change the leg setup. So we're gonna have an opposite situation. and then change both. So now left arm internally rotates and look to your right. Change side. And come back to center. Hug your left knee into your chest as you stretch your right leg out along the ground. Stretch your left arm up and reach over. Deflate the ribs down as the arm's reaching. Then change sides. Slide your right heel in. Take your right knee as you slide your left heel out. Right arm reaches. Deflate the ribs back in and down. Change sides. Change sides. Bring the legs into tabletop. Change sides. And change sides. Keep your pelvic roots lengthened out of your lower back. See how low you can lower the leg before your abdominals give up and your lower back wants to arch. Try to keep the lumbar spine in its neutral position, not flat, but not elevated. Now bring your legs in table and crunch up. And then see if you can stretch both legs forward, keeping your low abs in, ribs down. And then maybe you can stretch your arms back without your rib cage lifting and then curl back in and reach out. Curl back in, reach out. Your middle shouldn't pop up. If it does, reach less or don't reach at all. Curl back in and reach out. Then set your feet down and we're gonna try to roll ourselves up so this is tricky. Now, if you lack the core strength, you can kind of give yourself a little cheat by putting your feet under the couch or something like that. But we're gonna roll up one bone at a time through the spine and try to come all the way up to seated. 
Sit bones reach down, arms go up, arms go forward, roll onto your sacrum, lower back, all the way down, and back up. Arms go up, and roll back. Good, then one more yin little stretchy thingy here. Roll onto your side, slide your hands behind your head, interlock your hands, and then let your elbows come towards each other so you can open up any tension in the back of your shoulder. Then do a little press down with your down hip, right hip, so your waist lifts a bit, and open up. Let your chest turn open. As you exhale, bring the elbows back towards each other. Feel any stretch in the back of the shoulder. Inhale, open. You might be able to bring the elbow all the way to the ground, depending. Exhale, elbows. Inhale, open. Then come back to neutral. Change sides. Little press of the left hip, so the left waist engages. Bring the elbows in. Inhale to open. Exhale. Feel the backs of the shoulders release. Inhale, twist open. Exhale. Inhale, twist open. Come back to center. Then lie on your back, hug your knees into your armpits. Roll yourself up to seated. And then if you're on a thick enough mat or a carpet or something like that, tuck your belly in if your lower back is healthy. See if you can roll back. Otherwise, you just stay in hug knees position on your back. Roll back to your shoulders and back up. Back to your shoulders. Back up. If it's bothering your lower back, don't try it. Just go knees to armpits. Let's turn into like Pio class. Pilates yoga. Okay, enough of that shenanigans. Let's do some extended childs. Downward facing dog. All right, are you ready for tricky dog? Tricky dog, walk the hands slightly closer to the feet, and then see if you can bring your left hand to your right, what's this thing called? Shankle, shin ankle situation. Then change sides, left hand plants, right hand reaches back. Plant your left hand, then walk your feet forward, and let your head drop. Roll yourself up. <clears throat> Stack your pelvis over your ankles, your ribs over your pelvis, your shoulders, and balance your ears. Join the palms. Take a breath in through your nose and let it out. Bring your arms to your side and open your eyes. Inhale, raise the arms, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. 
Inhale, Ardha, flat back. Step back, plank pose. From plank position, put your left hand in the middle and roll to the outside of your left foot. Take your right arm up. As a modification, you can drop your knee down. If you have any wrist or shoulder issues, your core hasn't developed the strength yet, you're just going to work with that knee down. If you already have the core and shoulder strength, have both legs stretched out. Change sides, right hand down, roll to the outside edge of your right foot, or work with the knee down. Come back to a plank position. Set the left elbow down. Right arm up. And still, you can work with the knees down. Change sides, bring the right elbow down. Bring both elbows down, press the forearms, little tuck in your pelvis, ribs in, hold an orange between your chin and your chest, imagine, so that the neck is long. Now keep your butt squeezed and lift your right leg up an inch. Change, lift the left. Set that foot down. Drop your knees, drop your pelvis. Now with your elbows down, lift your forearms up just slightly and swivel your forearms out to the side so you're externally rotating, like you're trying to reach the thumbs out with the palms up. So now you know what it feels like to try to externally rotate. So now, can you lift up onto your knees and maintain that rotation? And without dropping into your ribs, maybe you can lift your knees up an inch. Keep the rotation in your arms, the rib cage in. Now drop your knees down, and we're gonna swivel over onto the hip, lift in the waist, and then I just want you to drive that arm back. So now the arm is abducted, it's out to the side. And you're just seeing how much you can press back. And you can see in my arm when I do that, these muscles turn on here in the back of the shoulder. So we want those to get strong, especially with all the planking and pushing we do in yoga. Drive down there, take this arm up. And then change sides. Now, eventually, you might be able to do this fully weight-bearing with the legs straight. But today, we're just working. Maybe the next time you do this video, foreshadowing, you can drive that arm back and feel that engage without pushing forward here. So just notice how your body wants to compensate to avoid what you're asking it to do. Excuse me. Come back onto your sphinx position. Rotate both of them but then lift your waist. See if you can maintain that and lift your knees. Some of you might be able to walk into down dog on the forearms, but you can see when I do that, my arms just want to go back to internal rotation. So you might just work like this. Down dog on the forearms or working the external rotation with the knees elevated slightly or the knees all the way down for five more breaths. Then come down from the dog 
and stretch back into child. So that's really gonna help with the health of your rotator cuff. Stretch back into downward facing dog. Step or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale into a flat back and exhale fold. Sit into chair position. Raise your arms as you lift the front of your pelvis. Stand and bring your arms to your side. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, fold. Inhale, flat back. Step back, lower slow onto your belly. Inhale, cobra pose. Now press the tailbone down and back towards your heels and see if you can roll your heart forward and then up. Then from your navel, can you roll your navel forward and then up? Lower back down and press back, downward facing dog. Raise your right leg up behind as you press your left big toe mound. Exhale your knee to your right outer armpit. Inhale, reach back. Exhale to your left pit. Inhale, reach back. Exhale the knee to your chest. Step your foot up. Ground your heel, engage your right hip, and as you inhale, come up into crescent lunge. Bring your hands down and step back, plank position. Lower down slowly onto your belly, knees down or legs straight. Inhale into a cobra. Reach the heart forward as you reach the buttocks down. Then draw the navel forward and up. See if you can lift up higher. Lower yourself back down. Stretch back in the down dog. Raise your left leg up behind you. Exhale the knee to the left pit. Inhale back up. Exhale to the right. Inhale back up. Bring your knee to your chest. Pull up. Step your foot up by your thumb. Ground your heel, engage your hip, and as you inhale, come up. Bring your hands down. Step back into plank pose. Lower slowly onto your belly. Good, now on your belly, feel those muscles in the back of the shoulder turn on and lift your hands up an inch. Now spread the arms out to the side and reach the arms straight back. Turn the thumbs up. Then internally rotate your arms. Bring your fingers onto your lower back, lower the elbows. Lift the elbows up, tuck in your chin, reach your buttocks down as you stretch your arms back. Turn externally, turn the thumbs up, reach the arms forward into a T position. Now see if you can lift up a little higher. Bring the hands back next to your side and press up, plank. Stretch back into downward facing dog. From down dog, look between your hands, step or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale into a flat back. Exhale, fold. Sit into chair pose. Bring hands to prayer. Twist, hook your left elbow to your knee. Step your left foot back.
Look down, bend your left knee, step forward, Uttanasana. Sit back into chair pose. Hands to prayer, twist. Shift your weight into your left foot. Step your right leg back. Look down, bend your back knee, load your left hip, and then step forward. Fold forward, Uttanasana. Roll yourself up to stand. Bring your hands behind your back and press your knuckles together. Step your left foot back about three and a half feet. Lengthen your tailbone down, and as you inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, reach forward out over your leg and pause there. Press down through your foot. Breathe the leg towards straight without locking your knee and make sure that your back hasn't rounded out at all. Then lower your left hand to your foot or to your block. Whatever you can do without rounding. And then as you press, press down through your hand, you can start to turn your chest. Lengthen through the inner line of this right leg, nice and tall, reach your pelvic roots back and the crown forward. If you feel very steady, you can take the arm up. Now like a windmill, press into your feet and come up and around for the other side. Bring your hands behind your back. Ground your back heel, tailbone lengthens down as you lift your heart. And then lengthen out over your leg. Pause in this position, and we're gonna work right here in this isometric where we're putting length into the tissue, so we're strengthening in this long position. So this is really good for your hip and your hamstrings. It, in fact, it's better than just hanging like this without, with the legs dead. Strengthening in a lengthened position, that's really good for your joints. Now, if you get so good at this, so you can start to go further forward, taking the whole spine forward and down, please do. But for many, this is probably best. Then lower your right hand to the block or to the floor. Make the inner foot connection up into your inner hip and then start to turn. For some, you might need two blocks or even a chair underneath your hand to get the spine to lengthen so you don't have the hunchback, the Quasimodo situation going on. That's not good, you don't want that. Maybe you could turn, you can hold here or perhaps take your arm up. Then press down into your feet. Inhale, come up and around. Step up to the top of your mat. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale into a flat back. Step your left leg back and drop the knee down. Hold here or reach back with your right hand for your foot or your ankle. You might need a block or two or something, you know, whatever, whatever you like to do. Then release that. Okay, now we're gonna take a deeper version of that last pose to where we walk out in the half splits. If you're a full splits person, you can go for it. But what we're gonna to try to do here is with the foot dorsiflexed to create all that length, put a micro bend in the knee, and then as you reach your sit bones out of your lower back, can you reach forward through your side ribs?
for some, it might not be enough stretch. You might go hands onto the floor, hands on the flat box. Go where you need. Oh, that's a little too much. Okay. <laughs> the right spot there. Breathe into that. So what kind of sensation are you going for? A balanced sensation. Five on a scale of one to 10. All right, release that and change sides. Left foot forward, right knee down. So in yoga philosophy, we talk about the central channel in the body being the sushumna nadi, the central channel. And in the sushumna nadi, for energy to be balanced, we're activating the channels along the side of the sushumna nadi, which are ida and pingala, or the sun and moon energy, or the heating and cooling, activating, calming, sympathetic, parasympathetic. And so through our practice, we're looking to find balance. Release that and slide your left leg forward. So the type of practice that you do is designed to bring balance into your life. So if you're like a go, go, go solar type person, your life is very hectic, you might already be attracted to practices, sports, activities that are solar like that because you do what you're used to. But you might find more benefit from doing the opposite. And this is another thing that the yoga texts suggest, yoga sutras in particular, is that we practice cultivating a bit of our opposite tendency. In each pose, it looks like you're trying to find a balance with your in-breath and your out-breath, and a balance of effort and surrender. That's yoga, baby. All right. Release that. Come to a kneeling position. Now, if this bothers your knees, you can do a reverse plank from your hands and your knees. If you're very open in your quads, then you might be able to lie all the way back or come onto your elbows or lie back onto a couple of blocks for your upper back like that or something. Or you can just kind of hang back here. We'll just do the um, most basic opening where you just walk your hands back. Now, as you exhale, connect your rib cage down to your pelvis and then reach your tailbone and buttocks down towards your knees. Lift your pubic bone up and slide the skin from the front of your pelvis up and over your shoulders as you roll your shoulders open. Keep wheeling the buttocks down. Reach the buttocks down. Then lower yourself back down. Maybe you can go a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. You could try to go. And then you're, what do I do with the head? Do I just let it pez the spencer back? No, try to keep the length. Try to integrate the head. You can even use your hands to integrate your head. Now, this is only for the healthiest of knees. So if you have a bad knee situation, then you'll have to consult the knights who say knee. No, you'll have to do the modification that I suggested at the beginning, the reverse plank. Do a second reverse plank if you're like, what the heck are we doing now? I'm still doing the reverse plank. But eventually, as the quads get healthy enough, you'll be able to hang out in that position. Now let's come out of that, and we'll do a little twist, a little Bharavajasan. Twist to your left. Come back to center and twist to the other side. Good. 
So again, if that position was very difficult, you can just practice going from here instead and then maybe lifting up your hips like that. Lie on your back. Oh, no, I got one for you. Sit with your legs wide apart. Let's do this instead. Sit with your legs wide apart, sit up tall. Then hook the inside of your left knee, bring your heel towards your pubic bone and turn to face your right leg. Now for some, this pose might need to look like this because your hips and your hamstrings are so tight. Just to be able to lengthen the spine, you'll have to lean back or prop stuff underneath your butt. For others, you could sit up straight. For others, you might be able to stretch out over your leg. Remember, you're trying to push yourself as deeply as you can and grit your teeth and hold your breath and just make it happen. No, that's not what you're supposed to do. Come back up and change sides. Find the stretch that works for you. Then come back up and take Baddha Konasana. Then lie down onto your back. Prepare for your Shavasana. Take a few minutes here in corpse pose. Adjust yourself so you can fully relax. Spend the time connecting to your breath. Thank you for joining me. Namaste.